I'm Tina Brown, and I'm thrilled to be here for the first ever Women in the World Summit in Toronto. What a great place and time for a happy inauguration in the stunning Art Gallery of Ontario, which is a work of art in itself. And also, to, of course, to be here during TIFF, which is celebrating the creativity of film. I just want to give one little cheer for the festival's campaign to nurture and, and, and support female directors. I mean, when Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman crushed Iron Man 3 at the box office, <laughs> right? That was a harbinger. We all knew what was coming next. So some people have asked me why we decided to bring women in the world to Canada at this time. Well, I think the answer is obvious. We came to see Justin Trudeau's Canada the way our grandmothers came to see Niagara Falls, right? <laughs> Your Prime Minister, who is joining us today, is an avowed feminist working to make his government reflect its citizens with that gender balance cabinet. But it's not just that he has a gender balance cabinet. Those women have the big meaty jobs in the cabinet too. Foreign Affairs Minister, Justice Minister, Indigenous Affairs Minister, Environment and Climate Change. These are big jobs with big women filling them. Canadian women don't just have influence, they have power. Like Niagara, a mighty current for all of us. And that could not be more exhilarating when every day our world is threatened by this. Right? <laughs> what a six pack, right? <laughs> A global horror show of toxic testosterone. <laughs> in the US right now, values and rights most of us took for granted, issues that we thought would have confined to developing nations, are under siege. But Canada is bucking the trend. And it's really no wonder that when we look across the 49th parallel, we such an see such an invigorating view of the future. Where a gender diverse government is a strong government, where compassion for refu refugees is not reviled as weakness, where concern for the savageries of climate change actually has a ministry with its name. Now, I founded Women in the World in 2009, born of frustration over US disengagement with the wider world. And that was before President Trump. Our mission was, and is simple, to bring the stories and the insights of women living the rawness of the news, unnoticed behind the headlines, and combine them with women who have made headlines themselves by leadership and achievement. The summit took off, like a bucking bronco, I have to say. So that every spring at Lincoln Center, New York's premier theater, we greet 2,500 audience members a day, and we've pushed out to London, India, Dubai, and now Canada. We featured on our stages more than 800 firebrands from 30 countries, women of courage and women of intellect. You'll meet some of them today, right here, and I defy you not to find them inspiring. We could not do this alone. We're deeply grateful to the forward-thinking companies who make this summit possible. We could not do, be here at all without the unstinting support of our presenting sponsor, Credit Suisse. Thank you, Ron Lloyd, you are a total mensch. And thank you, Jim Amin, too, two really wonderful men who are responsible for us being here. And our leadership sponsor, P&G, thank you, Caroline Tasted, enormously, and our supporting sponsors, Toyota and Thomson Reuters, and our marvelous media partner, The Globe and Mail, led by a true supporter of women. <laughs> thank you, David Walmsley. Women cannot achieve true gender equality without the vigorous support of such men, including some you'll see on stage today. And we really need that support. That is why it's such an honor to have with us today a leader who has made elevating women such a priority in his administration. And before he comes up, I'd like just to remind you how many times he's used his mega platform to tell the world he's a feminist. 